Boom. Hey everybody, it's Rick Silva. Hey, thanks for watching this video. You need more leads, you need more referrals. You just need to make more money and more sales. Well, what I'm gonna talk to you about today is how to get more referrals, triple your income, and work 10 to 20 hours less than you do now. We're gonna cover that and a whole lot more coming up. What the difference is between a lead and a referral because it's so misunderstood. I've been teaching this for 18 and a half years and people think leads and referrals are the same. We're gonna go over that. We're gonna dive right in. I'm gonna talk to you today about what do you do? So I want you to think for a second. Somebody gives you a lead or somebody gives you what you think is a referral. What do you, what's the first thing you do with it? Somebody hands you a lead or a referral. What do you do with it? I want you to think about that. Most people make contact. They just call the person up and that is a colossal error and it should be the absolute last thing you do. If you initially make contact without doing the things I'm about to explain to you, then you're dealing with a lead. And I want to give you my thoughts on the difference between a lead and a referral without blowing the punchline too much. But let's just explain it this way. If you did something on the internet or you paid for uh, uh, to get business and a lead came in. So if you're in real estate and you've ever heard of this before, right before the person goes to sign on the dotted line, hey, I heard you guys make a lot of money. I'd like some of that. I'd like a discount. Oh, I just, uh, I decided to go with my neighbor. He's a real estate agent also. If they're asking you for discounts, if they're standing you up for appointments, uh, you're spending all these hours working with somebody, there's no loyalty. They'll leave at the drop of a hat, ask for discounts, not loyal, not show up. All the things that people do when it's a lead. I do not work with leads under any circumstance, especially in a real estate business, because my wife has to spend anywhere from one to five hours with somebody. Leads are too hard to close. Bottom line, they're too hard to close. You could do all this marketing, get 30 leads in. I could build a referral-based practice and get four referrals in. You're lucky if you close four of those 30 leads, we'll close all four referrals. You just work less and make more with referrals. Bottom line, I've made millions of dollars with this, been studying this my whole life. And it's just a fact. Referrals are easy to close. Let's talk about the difference between a lead and a referral and what I do when I receive a referral. What's a lead? A lead is the contact information you received by doing some form of marketing. Let's look at the definition real quick of marketing. It's an organizational function and a set of processes for creating, communicating, and delivering value to potential customers. The ongoing process of moving people closer to making a decision to purchase or use our products or reach out, send us an email. It all comes from marketing. What are some functions of marketing would be Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, email marketing funnels, cold calling, door knocking, and anything else you can think of that goes in print, that gets mailed out, that gets emailed out or gets put on the internet. It is marketing. Not bad, not good. It's just what it is. It's marketing. And marketing brings in leads and we'll talk a little bit more more about that shortly. That's for leads. So what's a referral? The contact information from another human being. They had a conversation with somebody and thought the person needs your services. Here's an example of what a referral is. A CPA is sitting at their desk with one of their clients. The client says, you know, I've been doing pretty well and you can see by my finances, I got a couple bucks put away and I think it's time to buy a home. A referral would be that CPA would go, you want to buy a home? Cool. Opens up his drawer, pulls out your business card and says, call XYZ, they're the best real estate agent I know and they'll help you get a home. Or that in that same conversation, I'm gonna pull out another card and say, call this person so you can get pre-approved for a mortgage loan because they should be contacting a mortgage person first. So a CPA, a trusted advisor of the person sitting at the desk says, I'm thinking about buying a home. That trusted advisor, that CPA opens up his drawer and pulls out your card and says, call this person. Now we're getting closer to a referral because that's a human to human contact. So I already said that. So, or, or even better, by the way, even better, the CPA says, I'm going to contact my friend, the real estate agent, and they're going to contact you. That's another level, way better than a lead. That's even better than what some people call a warm referral. If a CPA says, call this person to buy your next home, that's good. If they say, I'm going to contact them, tell them about you, that's better. I'm going to show you best. So what do referrals come from? Generally from past clients. Now, a lot of people throw this SOI word around. Past clients would fall under SOI, but stands for sphere of influence. People also call your friends, your neighborhoods, your sphere of influence. I disagree with that, but we'll go with it because that's what the so-called experts call it. You have spheres of influence, but then you have power partners also called POI, which is person of influence, COI, circle of influence, another COI for center of influence, 
or my definition of an SOI, which is the same as power partner, a power partner would be a trusted advisor who sends you referrals. Let's go a little deeper. So I'm going to split you in half. I, I hope it doesn't hurt too bad, but I'm going to take a samurai sword. I'm going to cut you in half. Ouch. Hopefully it didn't hurt too bad. On this side of your referral and lead life, you are going to get leads and referrals from current, past, current, and future clients. And that's good. These are better from power partners. If you're a real estate agent and a CPA or a financial advisor or an estate planning attorney or insurance agent or one of a hundred different industries says, call XYZ real estate agent. That person happens to be you. It's coming from a trusted advisor where generally if my CPA told me to call another professional, maybe an HR consultant or a payroll person, I'm not going to call them up and go, yeah, you know, I know a lot of other people like you and I don't know if it were, oh, can I have a discount? Can I have some money back? Can I have some of your commission? If it was referred, if my CPA told me to call someone, there's so much trust there. I'm going to do everything I can to keep that relationship. So coming from a trusted advisor is way better than coming from a past client. It's not even close. Let me tell you, I talked to a lot of people. There's even a term called referral marketing. I use the term. There's no such thing. I use it because the so-called coaches who teach it know nothing about networking. They know a lot about marketing. So they go, hey, market for referrals. You market for leads. You network for referrals. I'll say it again. You market for leads. You network for referrals. Marketing comes from you to something in print or video. Referrals come from another human being. If it came from print, it is not a referral. So referral marketing doesn't exist because you market for leads. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Two things in common, it's a joke. Nothing, nothing. Leads and referrals have nothing in common with each other. Now I'm gonna show you what we do with referrals, but let's co cover a couple definitions real quick. I feel, uh, I feel that networking is through the law of reciprocity system in which you help others reach their personal and professional goals. Knowing that in return, you'll be helped in reaching yours. Remember, I'll say it a million times till I die. Marketing is for leads. Networking is for referrals. One expert said business networking is a process of developing and activating your relationships to increase your business, enhance your knowledge, and expand your sphere of influence. What did I ask you in the beginning? When somebody hands you a lead, what do you normally do? You make contact. Again, you that's the last thing you should do. Let me show you what my wife and I do. Now, we've made millions and millions and millions of dollars. 800 transactions. We've had an average real estate agent, if they ever did in their lifetime, 800 transactions would lose in process. Hundreds of those. Uh, in process of those 800, we I think we've lost six or seven. When you work with referrals, your close rate is very high, allowing you to make more money, to close that five to 10 times higher percentage and also work a lot less. And then you don't have to have three hour appointment with somebody who backs out at the last minute. Referrals, that just doesn't happen. The CPA example, the CPA is sitting with somebody. That person says, thinking of buying a home. The CPA pulls out your card if you're a real estate agent, if you're a C, whatever you do, you're watching this, whatever you do for a living, this card is you. The CPA says, call this person. The better one is if the CPA says, I'm gonna contact this person so they can help you buy your next home. This is what we do because I would never contact somebody without this filled out. If a CPA contacted me and said, I have a client interested in having you help them buy a home, it's still a lead. I'm going to show you what makes it a referral right now. This is the secret sauce that we use for our real estate business. If this does not get filled out, I don't make contact because if the CPA can't take a few minutes to fill this out or we get most of our, we, I should be using the mortgage lender. We We've done three or four or 500 deals with referral referrals from mortgage lenders. If the mortgage lender would not fill this out, it's a lead. I don't contact leads. I said that at the beginning, you might think I'm crazy. Well, that craziness has made me millions of dollars. If a, if a mortgage lender, we use a mortgage lender example, called us on the phone and said, we have somebody interested in investing in land. The first thing we're going to do is awesome. We're going to send this form. I'd like their name, their age, their occupation. Are they married? Because if they're married, we want both decision makers. What city do they live in? Uh, how long have you known them? What did you tell them so far? And what was their response? Why do you think they'd be interested in investing in land? Uh, the stock market freaks them out. They own too many homes. They don't want to have any more rentals. There's a million reasons why somebody want to invest in land. What are their own funds? Is it cash or old 401ks? Do they have any previous knowledge? Are they real estate investors? The reason we need to know these things is because before my wife makes contact with this now referral, it's good to know because if they have little kids, we'll talk to them about how much college costs to get them thinking about investing to pay for college. 
if their kids are in their 40s, we are not going to talk to them about uh, how much college costs. We are going to talk to them about how much they need to have in retirement. So what you do is you get the prospect profile filled out and then you can give a better presentation to the client. That's one part. This is the other part. Now we're talking about a referral. This is a referral. When you figure out all the questions you need to ask your referral partner, get them to fill it out. And then before you contact the client, you need to do recon and research. So here's what I do. I get the form filled out. Then I go on Facebook. I go in LinkedIn and I do all the research I can on that person. Now I like, I like fishing. I like cigars. I like meat smoking. I like to travel. I'm going to learn everything I can about that person on LinkedIn and Facebook. If I can, if I can, I'm going to put that package together and hand it to my wife, Marcella. And then she's going to know everything about that person. Then she'll make contact a lead. You ran an ad and somebody wants more information, not loyal, ask for discounts, want refunds, stand you up. Don't show up, have no loyalty. A mortgage lender told somebody call Marcella because I think you should invest in land. We get this form filled out. I do the research and now it's a referral. Anything less than that, I do not make contact because I used to work 80 hours a week to make two or 300,000 a year. Now it's 15 hours a week to make over 800,000 a year. And it's because of this trick. So remember, without the prospect profile and recon, it's just a lead. Whew. Thank you very much for watching. If you need a one-on-one -on -one referral coach, if you want to look at my courses, go to onereferralaway.com. Email me onereferralaway at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.